vader dat cadeautje hoor. We're back. So we just did a, 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 a quick pit stop and uh, here we are again. So welcome to the second part, uh, the fix of the water tanks. We uh, had corrosion in our water tanks and we had to repair that. So in previous video you saw that we uh, went uh, uh, by sail to Van der Meer. We hauled the boat out and uh, measured what part to be cut out of the boat on the hull. And um, after it was cut out, created a plate, welded it back in and did a lot, a lot, a lot of painting. Uh, this video is about what we did after that. So first let me take you along and start with a little um, show uh, uh, of how the boat currently looks. super happy with the result and um, what was on the to-do list uh, to finish was uh, was small things and big things we started with a small thing which was measuring up the letters at the transom uh, obviously we wanted to change that because it said Vorkum instead of uh, uh, Amsterdam which it should say uh, so started there that was pretty easy ordered the new stickers and then we went to the through holes couple of jobs that we need to do Eentje is de afsluiters vervangen. Dus er zitten van deze afsluiters in en dat heeft jarenlang prima gewerkt. Maar ik voel me er niet helemaal confident bij. Dus we hebben andere. En dus gaan we ze vervangen met de True Design afsluiters. Die je hier ziet, die zit natuurlijk nog niet vast. Maar dit is de eerste. En hij zit op de schroefas. So we replaced about 7 through holes, I think. Uh, all with through design and the good thing there is that we have one or two spares and I know the other ones were good as well but uh, it's one of these things that you just don't want to think about uh, from that there was one other thing uh, where the whole hout was handy for we had a depth sounder that kind of didn't really work uh, also there was no wind instrument in the mast um, and uh, the speedometer uh, was also not uh, uh, installed so we basically brought a, bought a new set raymarine i70 set with the two displays and uh, yeah all the stuff that came with it uh, and i wanted to put in the depth sounder because obviously that's a huge hole 52 millimeters uh, in your hull so um uh, the depth sounder in itself is already quite a bit tricky. Uh, I was very, very, very fortunate that uh, uh, the diameter of, the, of the, the previous sounder was exactly the same. So I could just get it out and then re-embed a new one. Final thing that we also wanted to do is because we had new water tanks and everything was clean and spiffy, uh, I wanted to clean the inner system. So we bought a new filter, we bought new hoses, we bought new cranes. And I had to install that. Uh, once that was installed, it looked uh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. New kraantje. Good God. And deze zit er dan ook op. So, and then all of a sudden it was done. It was finished. We had all the jobs that we wanted to do uh, ticked off. So, a final meal, a final sunset, and then a final sleep. And then the day after, uh, we were hauled back in. So where there first was uh, my boat, now there was a big gap again. You could actually read the letters on the door. 
and the boat was afloat. Uh, everything was okay. There was no water coming in. There were no strange things. Uh, everything uh, still worked. So uh, yeah, I felt truly, truly grateful for an amazing period uh, uh, in Snake. I have prepared the boat for a launch, so to say, and um, uh, my first a solo sail to uh, yeah, to uh, a green island. Uh, it was around the corner, uh, and I really like uh, uh, the Flusse. Uh, no, the Marguerite. It's called. Sorry, it's a concept where you can put your boat on an island, and then you can just stay there. There is no electricity, no water, no no sewage, no nothing. So you you have to be self-sustaining, and uh, it was the perfect place to uh, to spend the night. So after uh, another night uh, in the water uh, and securing that there was nothing wrong uh, with nor the, uh, the depth sounder or the through holes or the water tanks, uh, I was ready to set sail to uh, my first destination, which was Stavoren. Kijk, je kan natuurlijk zeggen dat we maar vier knopen gaan. Wat zeg ik? Twee knopen. En dat er geen wind staat. Dat klopt allemaal wel. Maar we varen wel solo de boot. En het zeil hijzen levert natuurlijk gedoe op als je het gereept hebt op de heenweg. Het zeil strijken gaat ongetwijfeld ook weer gedoe opleveren. Maar het lukt allemaal wel. En dat is toch fijn. Met name dat ik dan nu zo weinig wind heb. Want dan is het voor mij wat beter te doen. As you can imagine, reaching Stavoren after your first solo trip, after fixing the boat, after all this hard work, it was like three and a half weeks and I also had to do my regular day job next to it. This was a, a very happy moment. So looking at the, at Vrouwtje uit Stavoren, the lady from Stavoren, uh, seeing uh, the IJsselmeer in front of me again, uh, having had beautiful weather uh, and having my wife come over was, uh, yeah, was a... Uh, was a super start of a three day sale. Yeah. We need to learn how to sail this boat together. We were lucky again because we had two, three blowing uh, downwind uh, to, uh, to Enkhuizen. We didn't go that fast, uh, but we had a nice uh, shower of rain, a rain shower, and reached Enkhuizen uh, on a sunny uh, afternoon where we uh, popped up a, a bottle of Padutu uh, and visited Enkhuizen, which actually is a rather nice city. And um, after a good night's sleep again, we, uh, we moved on to Volendam. Coming to the harbor of uh, Volendam is always something special to me. It is the, the harbor that I've seen most in my sailing career. I don't know why, but I seem to always end up there. We had a beautiful sail. We did 4.5 knots. And once we were there, Steph and Cooper joined us. The next day we uh, were supposed to, uh, to go sailing. Uh, but looking at the weather forecast, it was uh, blowing uh, five, gusting six, and uh, with the dog and with Steph on board and Sasha for the first time, uh, I actually thought it wouldn't be the best of ideas. I'm very happy that we decided not to go for two reasons. One, we could visit Volendam uh, and just walk around and enjoy the scenery. And uh, second, it was Papa Dag, so I got a brilliant uh, gift. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, we had just a plain nice day and a great evening. 
vaderdag cadeautje hoor. feeling that you're almost there exactly in het zicht van de haven is what we say in dutch it almost went wrong we set sail on a beautiful day a four three three gusting four probably uh, close hauling no problem um, but once we got to vuurtoren eiland i wanted to put the engine on because it's quite a busy part of amsterdam so I put the motor on and it started beeping. And I was like, ah, oh, haha, what's wrong? Um, I did that about three times and then I figured something is wrong with the engine and I cannot go into that busy part. Um, but also the wind had picked up a bit. It was now four, casting five. And it is an area where there is a lot of work being done at the moment. So you cannot just go like anywhere. We had to turn around, sail back, in between all these construction works and then go to anchor on sail with the dog with Sasha with me and an engine that wouldn't run um, and that was actually quite exciting it's these things that you want to experience because this is what you do when you experience so now you know what to do fortunately we knew what to do and I'm very proud of Steph because he was like okay I will Steer the boat, no problem. And he just steered the thing exactly where we wanted to have it. Dropped anchor and we had time to check the engine. So the first thing that we did was I went overboard to see if there was something clocking the uh, cooling system. Uh, nothing was clocking the cooling system. So I thought, well, then we need to check the impeller. So I checked the impeller and sure, yes, that was the problem. So the impeller was like, almost totally gone there was just one scoop still there uh, fortunately we carried a spare one and uh, once we replaced that um, we actually started the engine again and it still beeped and I was like what what is why is it still beeping and then I only realized that I had the throttle straight up instead of giving it a little bit of throttle uh, I kind of like it when these things happen uh, we learned two things you need to give a little bit of throttle and uh, once we did that uh, when I started the engine, I uh, actually heard it was okay and the new impeller was good. So uh, all in all, that was, uh, yeah, that was good. And we would go on the engine uh, back to, uh, to our home. So once we got back home, two, two items on the to-do list. One, buy a new impeller because you need it, especially if you need it. And two, find all the pieces from the old impeller that were apparently somewhere in the system. So I got off all or most of the hoses and I found two things, all the pieces of the impeller. So I could piece that back together. The impeller. Maar dan degene die... kaput is. But I also found that the hoses were not all that fresh anymore. So I decided to replace the hoses as well, as they were off anyway, and uh, I figured it couldn't hurt after 20 years of service. So once that was done, there was actually one more big to-do on the to-do list, and that was to get the electronical system up and running. Uh, for that, there were two things I needed to do. Uh, one was go up the mast uh, and actually fix uh, the wind indicator, uh, which uh, after uh, flying over with the drone, I figured should fit.
equipment in place, which I tested before. It was time to test the new transducer. Uh, that also uh, seemed to work uh, pretty well, at least the uh, speedometer uh, seemed to work. So it was about time to open up the 52 millimeter hole in the boat, and uh, below the waterline that is, uh, to get that one in. Exciting! What we're going to do is we're going to stop the stop draaien and this erin drukken. And that is uh, best wel spannend. I'm going to put the steen in the water, so we'll see what it's going to be. So obviously I wanted to make a movie from that and I wanted to show you everything and we just pulled the plug and put the new one in and then forgot the movie all together. Not so handy, apologies, but the result is good. We're still afloat. That's step number one. And the water is actually, the water was quite okay. Ondanks that that echt spooky as was, valt de hoeveelheid water eigenlijk alleszins mee. Nice. So, and then obviously came the moment to check if it actually works. I do it. So with the engine done, with the instruments done, what remained was the water tanks. Because they were painted, but they were not in use yet. They had to dry for 14 days. And after that, uh, we had to clean them. But first, we needed to make sure that we could put the lids back on. And there we made a decision to not do that with uh, stainless steel, but do it with nylon bolts. <laughs> nylon uh, bolts and clearly uh, there is a discussion on how strong that is compared to stainless um, and I've been looking at how much torque I can put on it and I actually couldn't find it so I'm gonna test it I'm gonna start at three newton meters exactly to see if I can actually Bolt it with that as it will be part of the water tank. I might <laughs> That's, this is very interesting. I cannot even make it up to three. You couldn't make it up to three newton meters but I still figured it would make sense to use them as the water tanks are mostly not full uh, and are not uh, constantly pressured and they have 24 bolts per section I figured let's just give it a try I actually am continuing with putting the nylon bolts in one and actually all of the water tanks reason being I need to put water in it for two days which I can do in a very confined way so I can actually minimize the risk and then I can see how it stands up if it leaks etc etc and I can always turn them around with the uh, stainless ones so the final task that needed to be done for the water tanks to be used uh, was basically to clean them with uh, a drip of uh, cleaning uh, uh, soda. So this actually marks the end of a uh, very long process. The last step. Lots of work. Um, but I actually want to prove a point here because um, it ain't always fun. Uh, it ain't always what you think it is, but as long as you have your long-term goal that you can focus on. <sighs> Finishing this is like, it's like goosebumps. It's like, like magic. It's like, yeah. It's like um, knowing that you're one step closer. By finishing these water tanks, I know that the ship in essence is ready to sail. 
uh, clearly there's things to do, but this is a big, big, a big, a big step. So uh, I'm really happy with uh, with it being almost done. So uh, yeah, let's move on. Let's go sailing. So let's go sailing. I think that is a brilliant closure of, uh, of this video. So uh, with this, I would say that big boat repairs are finished. And there is always work to be done, but uh, the, uh, the essence is that this boat is ready to sail and this is what we're gonna do. So we're making plans already for summer. Obviously I will take you along. Um, if you've liked this video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. It's also an indication for me. And um, if you uh, want to leave a comment or if you have any questions on corrosion in your uh, water tanks, uh, yeah, just uh, reach out, leave a comment and uh, I can have a look at it. So hit subscribe if you want to see next videos. Hope to see you next time and uh, it was great uh, making this video for you again. See you guys. Oh man, this is difficult. <laughs> it's like virtually impossible, but it's still happening. Oh, ik ga even, I'm gonna stop doing this up here. And with the puntjes op de i, we welcome you home, Windrose.